everybody. Hello and welcome to day four of Vlogmas. Can you believe we've made it to day four? I honestly can't. I'm actually quite impressed with myself. A little bit shocked. Yeah, honestly. Guys, can we have a round of applause, please? Because a lot of you didn't think I do, could do this. You thought I'd be stuck at day one. But hopefully, if tonight goes to plan, there have been four vlogs out in a row, which is just something I never thought I'd be able to do. Also, Ari update, he is about to fall asleep. It's only about nine in the morning now, so you know, we just, it's just about to get cozier. Um, yeah, I might try and come in later and film him snoozing just to keep the trends going for you. But today is a new day, a new vlog. We are going to be doing some exercises in the school with baby ponies. So it's Jaffa and Jam. It's a video that I've not really ever done before. Um, I'm basically gonna set out some exercises that I like doing with my youngsters and then try and do a voiceover. <laughs> which I really don't want to do. I don't know why. I get nervous doing voiceovers, which is bizarre because I spend all my life like behind the camera, which is surely worse because you're looking at my disgusting face, which I need to go and sort out before actually doing the rest of this video. Um, but yeah, that is the plan. I'm gonna set up some pole exercises and show you with Jaffa and Jam because they're at quite different stages. Jaffa's obviously been broken about a month. He's four. Jam has been broken. Uh, how long has she been broken for? Since like April time and it's now December. You do the maths, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, she's been broken that long. So she's obviously quite a bit further along than Jaffa, but I'm gonna be using similar exercises or keeping the poles in the same place and just showing you like a, a sort of day-to-day -day training session. I hope it's interesting, but it's been really requested just to sort of see a normal training session. So that is the plan. I'm gonna do a voiceover, I'm not gonna get nervous. <laughs> if you hear me trembling in the voiceover, guys, just pity me, okay? Don't, don't write mean comments. Anyway, let's get into it properly because I know you're all here to see what the giveaway is and you may have guessed, the fact I'm not in a Christmas hat, that it is this lovely hat silk from Hardy Equestrian. So this is what's up for grabs now. It is a limited edition one. I'm gonna get a little video of me filming around it for you. So I might cut that in here. So Hardy Equestrian do clothing and all sorts. For example, this lovely hat silk we've got here. The fun thing about this is that it actually has interchangeable pom-poms. So you'll see I've currently got the gray one on right now, but it's got a little brown one with it. Uh, but you guys are actually gonna be getting three interchangeable pom-poms with it, I believe. So yeah, you can just sort of mix and match it to your outfits or to your horse. This one I think goes really well with like a gray, but then obviously the little brownie one would be nice with like a dun or a bay. So yeah, it's really cool that you can mix and match it. And I love the white, it looks so classy. I'm a big fan. You know, it's a bit of a running joke on my Instagram and probably on my YouTube that I never changed my hat silk. So when they said they were gonna send me this, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Please send me that because I get bullied for not having a cool hat silk. And now I've made you all look right full because I look really cool, okay? So yeah, I feel pretty sassy. I won't lie, guys. I'm loving the pom-pom. This is what's up for grabs from the lovely Hardy Equestrian. They are, in fact, at Olympia this week. Uh, I believe it started today, Olympia. They're stand G189 for anyone that wants to go and check them out. But in the meantime, why not get entering this giveaway to try and win this hat silk? Because it's really nice and nice and stretchy. So it's not gonna be one of those ones that you can't get over your hat, which I hate. And you'll see it's got the branding on it too. So unfortunately guys, this giveaway is only UK. So please don't enter if you don't live in the UK because you will be disappointed. I'll have to draw a new winner. But there's plenty more coming up for people, for my overseas viewers. So fear not, but yeah. Make sure you listen out for the special phrase, guys, because you might be in a chance of winning this hat silk and then we could match. We could match. I meant to say, for people that are winning these prizes, when you get them, please take pictures and tag me and tag the brands because we love seeing them all. Anyway, enough jibber jabbering from me because, you know, that's not what you guys are here for. I'm going to go and have some breakfast, sort this monstrosity out. Uh, come back in, do Jaffa. I'm gonna do Jam this afternoon because she's out in the field and I don't wanna 
disturb her day too much. She's having like a nice day in the field. So I'll get her in and do it just before it's dark. But let's get going. Three, two, one, break. Heading down to the school with the Jaffmeister. He's got his lovely tinsel on. I've got my very nice hat silk on. So yeah, let's do some exercises for the babies. I'll pan round in a minute and show you what we've got. Ba -ba -ba. There we are, you can sort of see. <sighs> yeah, so I'll hop on, get warming up, and then I'm gonna do a little voiceover to take you through what I'm doing. Make sure you listen out for the special Christmas phrase or sentence, guys. Okay, little hint. Oh, good boy. Don't think you were in the tinsel, you look so cool. You're right with that. Good boy. Becky Merry has Christmas. already written in the tinsel. Disclaimer. <laughs> I didn't want to get on the four-year-old if he hadn't been written in tinsel. He's the brave one. <laughs> I'm brave too. <laughs> okay, so just walking around to warm up. Do lots of transitions with my youngsters. Um, yeah, literally loads of transitions and then we'll get Going with the poles. Patient, doesn't he? Come to learn that a pat doesn't mean go forward. Hello, all. This is. Is it my first voiceover? Maybe not my first ever one. No, I've done one before. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. I'm doing this so I can talk you through it without getting out of breath if I speak you through whilst riding. Saying that I'm already out of breath, but we'll see how we go, guys. So this was the first little thing I did. It's just a pole in the corner, basically just to help youngsters get into their corners and not fall in through their hind quarters or their shoulders. I just find so often they cut their corners. So from a young age, I like to sort of make sure they're going into their corners and stepping underneath themselves. This was his first time trying out this exercise, bless him. So literally, yeah, wanted to just show it to him the first time. But this is such a useful exercise for doing all sorts. You'll see throughout the session, I sort of switch up a bit with it and use it in different ways. But a really nice one for babies to work on straightness. So it goes up the centre line, which is great for getting used to that because he's going to be doing a lot of that, doing dressage tests. And then it really gets them thinking about their feet. It changes or, and going into that box can actually be quite spooky for them. As you'll see with Jam and Bear was really, really spooky. So going the other way, a nice little stretch to get over the pole there. He's thinking about his feet. And I like having the straightening poles before and after because it's just, it's such a good habit for them to learn as babies. And then you'll see here you can go over in a little diamond, which is nice. The points really help you to sort of realise whether you're staying straight or not. Oh, a little trip. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll see here he has a little wobble and it just really highlights how sort of easy it is to stay straight or not easy in this case. But he actually improved on that so much throughout the session. Starting through it again. So there we go. Pat for him. I'm quite sort of content that he's used to that now. Where am I going here? I'm going over some little trot poles. So these were set at two and a half wide, I think. Those are just really, I just love trot poles, not just for youngsters. I use them with absolutely everything. It's so good to get them stepping through with their hind leg. Oh, fun fact, these are actually gutters from b and I use them for poles. As you can see, you can tread on them. They're absolutely fine. <laughs> That's why I left that in to show you guys that it's, they're fine to tread on. There's a little spook at the dog. Yeah, really recommend getting these gutters. So much cheaper than poles, guys. It's like three pounds to get a gutter. And I, I've had mine for about three years. Really recommend. So now I'm gonna come down to these wooden poles and do a little halting exercise. So you'll see, whoops. Um, yeah, just get them to halt with the pole in between 
both his legs. So I find it's really good to have a set place to halt with youngsters. They've got to halt when you ask them to halt rather than just run through the bridle. Ooh, he gets confused there, bless him. So yeah, if you make sure you do this, then it sort of gives you an end place to halt and it makes them think about their feet a bit more. I also use it for getting square halts a bit later on, but we'll talk about that at another stage. So here I'm mixing up my centre exercise a bit, I'm introducing some transitions. I think I say at the start of this that transitions are honestly so key for youngsters. I just do them non-stop. And what I like about this exercise, again, like I was saying before, is <laughs> there's the dog. <laughs> um, yeah, it, having the poles gives you a place to do something. So it's like, you know, you're building up to doing a dressage test at the end of the day. So you want to get things done on the markers. So the poles just give you some, like, a place to actually do a transition or, like we're doing here, something to physically bend around. Um, this exercise I love for youngsters. Bending and steering is, like, one of the hardest things for them to get. So I think if they have a physical object to move around, it's so good for them. You'll see him moving around this. He can't just duck in with his shoulders or with his hindquarters. So he's actually stepping under with that inside hind leg and crossing it underneath him and sort of bending around his body and around my leg which is ultimately what we need so when we introduce lateral work he needs to understand this concept so this is how I start them are we doing something different we are so we're going to halt between those again really useful for keeping the halt straight you don't bum twinging side to side straight up into trot and um, back to halt that's quite a tricky one so because he's a little bit stuffy I quite like doing sharp transitions so Halt to trot or, you know, walk to trot, but nice and quick is really, really good for him to do. And it keeps him thinking. He, like, literally when he comes up that centerline exercise, he doesn't have a clue what I'm going to ask him. So he's really listening to me. So I'm going to try and perfect this a bit more now. Get my halt. Oh, good boy. That was such a sweet transition down. Oh, my God, I love him. Trot on and then try and halt again. So this is actually quite hard. Those poles are pretty close together like it's there are quick transitions for a four-year-old so and considering he's never done anything like this before I was super super chuffed so this time we're going to change it up we're trotting through there and you'll see he just ran through the bridle a bit there but because there are poles on the floor it doesn't last very long because he's got to think about his feet so I think it's it's almost like a distraction in some ways the poles for youngsters it just keeps them think about themselves it keeps it a bit more interesting so we're doing our diamond exercise look how much straighter that is already one session on doing straightness exercises and he just trots through the diamond like that he's such a legend one thing i should say guys is regular breaks are so key for youngsters you've got to give them time to process things bit wobbly but straightens up good boy so yeah regular walk breaks just to let them sort of rest their mind and body so this was like the last little assault course kind of thing I did. Halt in the middle of the box that time. Draw it on. Good boy. Where are we going? Around there, using my corner pole still. Those are just useful to just throw down in the arena and you can just do whatever you want with them. Oh no, this isn't my last one. This is something else. Uh, so this will show you that the box is spooky because this was right near the end of the session and he hadn't been through the box this way and he just reads it differently so it's a really nice sort of thing to to get them to trust you because you know that they can just you know walk through it like that so again yeah a really nice way of using that exercise getting them to trust you a bit more so this was the last time he went round so we're trying to make it nice and different and it's sort of like, you know, obviously he's he's popped a fence or two, but he's not done a course. So this is kind of like doing a course with poles. It's a really nice way to introduce them to jumping and having to sort of concentrate around the arena and think about other things rather than just what's going on outside. Like he's actually got to think about the exercise he's doing. So we're going to do a little weave here. I'd actually move those poles closer together now. I was sort of anticipating him being a bit greener but he was honestly he was just so good this pony's such a quick learner and then in the pole in the corner there really pleased with that round here over the trot poles for a final time getting that hind leg under 
And now, guys, you've got to listen in because I'm going to tell you something. What do you want for Christmas, Meg? <laughs> All I want for Christmas is Jaffa. <laughs> and that's what you've got to go and comment on my latest Instagram post, guys. So, just finished our little pole and assault course session with Jaffa. He was such a good boy, but definitely highlighted a lot of uh, wobbly points and bits we need to work on. But he is only four and has been broken a month, so don't think we can complain. But in case you didn't hear, what you have to go and comment is, all I want for Christmas is Jaffa. So comment that on my latest Instagram post and you'll be in with a chance of winning one of these lovely hat silks and interchangeable pom-poms. Just about to tack Jammy up to do some more exercises for you guys, but I've noticed the hardy hat silk, the pom-pom matches her. <laughs> so if you've got a grey horse, guys, you have to try and win this because honestly, I'm gonna look so cool with this on. Good girl, Jam. I need a little pom-pom for your head. Nice, isn't it? Ooh, come on, jam, jam. Pony number two for exercises. It's now later in the day. You can see I've, oh, that's my tummy. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've put a more Christmassy festive jumper on, which is not particularly flattering, but just focus on the hat silk, guys, because that's a nice thing I'm wearing. Okay, so I am on the lovely jammy. Um, I've got the same pole set out. I'm going to get mum just to add four more poles somewhere for me just to make one of the exercises a bit different um but i'm going to be doing similar stuff with jam even though she's quite a bit well a lot uh, further on than jaffa she's going through a very common youngster phase where they sort of think they know best and they just get a bit sure of themselves so i'm gonna strip her back a bit take her back to the steering and the stopping just to be, to be again um yeah i just think she jumping vlog uh, but I'm gonna crack on because it looks like it's about to get dark okay so I'm back again firstly guys let's address the elephant in the room that jumper is not doing me any favors I'm not wearing that in a vlog again but let's just ignore it guys let's concentrate on the learning so here I am on jam I'm starting off with this exercise which is so helpful not just to youngsters to literally all horses um, it's been recommended by my dentist, my physios. It's really, really good. I've been doing it for about a year now. Uh, so basically, it's really, really simple. Just in walk, you really gently bring them round with your inside rein and inside leg. So just pushing her over. You can see there my inside leg's a little bit back and just very gentle squeezes. And then the inside rein is just gently asking her to sort of come down and round. Um, you can take your hand lower and wider for this, it's really not going to have any effect on the bit. Don't worry, I checked with my dentist, he said it's absolutely fine because you're not yanking from the other side as well. Um, so your outside rein is pretty loose, it's just there to encourage them to take the bit forward a bit. So when they do that, obviously you loosen off. So you can see I'm literally using my index finger, oh good girl jam, and it's just so good to get their front end working independently from their back end get them learning that they can bend side to side without their quarters sort of moving or falling out or falling in uh, and also you can see she's stepping under with that inside hind leg which is just so good for stretching their back end you know if your horses get tight hamstrings which 90% of horses do because that's just the way their bodies work this exercise is so good for like stretching off their hamstrings, getting them stepping under and moving their bodies. Also get some working through their back. Honestly, this is just so good. Obviously, you don't want to be yanking your horse's head around. It's got to be done very gentle. You can see my fingers there, literally just giving little half halts. And you want them to go down and round, so ideally stretching forwards. Okay, so next little exercise is using the box, but I've added two V-poles. 
Again, this is working on similar stuff because jam steering is not great and she doesn't work independently. Like she just, where her head goes, her body follows. So I'm trying to get her to learn that she can move all her legs independently. And again, there we go. So the poles there are just to teach her that if she falls out through her hindquarters, there's something there to stop her. So it's just like a little reminder that no, no, don't do that because look, there's something here. And she picked up so quickly, you can see here. She just really, really steps under herself and she's actually thinking about where she places her body and she's bending on that inside leg, which is exactly what I want. This is just like all the sort of groundwork to teach them lateral work as well, guys. This is what I do with mine to get them learning that. So go the other way now. Look at that swing with a back end. Yes, jam, you go girl. Here she proper goes under, I think. Boom. <laughs> what a legend. So yeah, it's just, it it really helps. It sort of channels you in those poles. Um, and it helps the front end as well. It stops them being able to swing their shoulders around. She gets a bit mouthy, but again, like I said, the Jaffa, having the poles there sort of keeps it interesting. And it, it gives her something else to think about. You know, if she's, if she's mouthing off, she's going to hit a pole and then that's going to make her stop because she's going to be like, oh, where are my feet? So it's just sort of keeping it interesting for them and actually having obstacles to go around and use so they kind of see the point of the exercise, if that makes sense. So yeah, I was really impressed with how much this helped me with her. It's my first time doing it with her because they have got to be, you know, they've got to understand all the steering because otherwise you're just going to end up treading on poles, which is not the point of the exercise. So yeah, buzzing with that. I think that was all I did because I'm really pleased with her with that. She's so clever. Okay, so now I'm going to do the trotting through the diamond. You can see she's already a lot straighter than Jaffa. I think that was her first time through. What a little legend. Um, and then she sort of struggles a bit with these V-poles. She's so keen. Um, but yeah, these are, these are really interesting one she's like a cat what a cutie because it takes a lot of sort of brain power for them to work out where to put their feet because they've got this triangle coming out to them so it's actually quite difficult for a horse to read um but so useful for jam because she's a bit keen she's you know you'll have seen in the jumping video she kind of she acts before she thinks about what's going to happen so it's nice here that she can be a bit I say naughty, she's not being naughty, but you know what I mean. And then she can make a mistake like that and she's not going to hurt herself, but she knows she's made the mistake. Whereas jumping, if she pulls and she goes on whatever stride she wants to go on, she could hurt herself. So that's why I like sort of stripping it back, like I said, <laughs> and doing the poles. There she'd been trying so hard to get the second one right that she just made the mistake in front. But you'll see here it pays off. So she's actually thinking. I take a little half halt here. And she actually listens, we'll see there, and boom, absolute legend. So buzzing with her for that. They're just so rewarding, young horses. I just love working with them so much. So then, yeah, I was really chuffed with that, so I decided that's it, time to stretch it off. I think knowing when to stop with the youngsters is really important. If you come in the school and after 20 minutes they've been really, really good and done great work, just put them away, like... You don't need to drill them for the full hour you were planning to ride for. You've sort of sometimes got to pick your moments. So I decided I'll just do a bit of stretching with her. Um, long and low work is honestly my bread and butter. Every single one of my horses does this every session. Sometimes I do full sessions of this. It is just, it's, oh, I, yeah, I just honestly love it. It's so good for building their muscles. See her neck rippling there? That is literally working that muscle which otherwise is very difficult to get to and it's building that up in sort of the most natural way possible really uh the idea is yeah you want them as low as possible and you ideally want them stretching their nose out like that um and also you can see look how much she's swinging behind it really is just amazing <laughs> Go. Let's go.
this. I was like, no, no, I don't want to do it in the dark. <laughs> Go. Tell I've just been riding, can't you, Jab? <laughs> oh, fuzzy, might take my hair down. Um, so that is the end of this. That's better. Okay, so that is the end of this vlog, doing some pole exercises with my youngsters. Jam, you're actually a good girl. It was really, really useful for you. I could literally feel her getting straighter as we went on. So it's just repeating that for the whole winter now. It's obviously good girl. With young horses, it's not one of those things you only do once. You've literally got to repeat, repeat, repeat. Hey, Jam Jam. As boring as that might seem, but it's so nice working with them because they're really rewarding. It does make it <laughs> a lot easier, Jammy, doesn't it? When they're good like you and you actually sort of see an improvement just in one session. Please don't bite my hair. Um, so if you want to be in with the chance of winning that lovely hardy equestrian hat silk with the interchangeable pom-poms, you should know what to do by now, guys. You've got to go over to my Instagram and comment that special phrase I said uh, on my latest Instagram post. It will be one of me in the hat silk, so it should be pretty obvious. And it will say that the giveaway is open in the description, so just look out for that one. Um, you've got to follow myself and Hardy Equestrian, and that is your entry done. But of course, you're more than welcome to share it to your story if you're feeling festive. Good girl, Jam. Jam, are you feeling festive? I think I've asked you this before. Oh, that was Jam's nostril, for those of you that haven't seen that so far. <laughs> but yeah, massive, massive thank you to the team at Hardy Equestrian. I'm so obsessed with that hat silk. Um, I can see me riding in that a lot to be honest I think that might be my new everyday one but then again I sort of want to keep it for competing mm, anyway that's a decision I will make not on the vlog Boop. but hopefully you've enjoyed watching this guys and yeah go and do that entry if you fancy that remember it is UK only unfortunately so I hope you've enjoyed watching and hopefully you will join me tomorrow for day five of vlogmas I still can't get over the fact that I've managed to do four vlogs in a row. Honestly, I need some recogni recognition for this, guys. I'm getting excited. I can't even speak. Um, but yeah, it's about to get dark outside. So I'm going to finish everything off in here and then come back and do late night hay in a minute. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.